All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Gartner. It's day two. I'm super excited to be with Drew here, who's the GM at Click. Uh, Drew, welcome to the Robert Show. It's your debut. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm super excited to be chatting with you. A lot of conversations that I'm pretty sure you are into. You're meeting a lot of customers, prospects, enterprise leaders. You've been doing talks as well, panel I have, discussions. Yes. So, um, curious to learn more about what you've been hearing from the leaders, analysts, what are they talking about, and what's happening at Gartner? Oh man, so many topics right there, right. and this is such a great show. Uh, I'm going to start with a quote I had from a customer just about an hour ago. Nice. And I was asking him, like, all right, well, what are you getting out of Gartner? How are you looking at it? Because this is such a great place for me to be able to work with all of my vendors around data and analytics. I can come to one place and talk strategy to kind of capabilities, and I don't need to travel around. So this is the place. There's over 2,000 enterprise customers exactly. here uh, in the last three days. So this is really big. This is huge for sure. Uh, I'm kind of also curious to, first of all, congratulations on the big news. I saw the news that you all acquired Upsolver. That's right. I'm kind of curious to know a little about what's uh, our customers going to benefit from, uh, you know, Absolver and it being a part of Click. Yeah, so a little bit of a, let's go back to the topic yeah. of Gartner and what's going on here, For and sure. then I'm going to explain how Upsolver fits I want that right connect. into that, right? Yes. So here at the Gartner Show, we're talking a lot about agentic AI, how do you use AI? But it all takes data, and you need that data that feeds into the platform for going to use for the generative side. Well, where do you put the data? A lot of people say, I'm going to put it in a lake or a lake house. So mm. you get this big theme around lake house of putting it into either a data warehouse or a data lake, combining it. Well, Iceberg is a new open source capability for storing, managing, working with data in a lake house environment. Yeah. Upsolver is a company that's been built to be able to work with feeding data into a lake house with Iceberg, and there's two parts to it. Mm. There is the management of the Iceberg data lake, and when you're dealing with petabytes of data, how do you optimize, make sure you can find it and query it? That's yep. what they do. Yep. And then the second thing that they do is they stream data into the lake house. So yeah. that's what Upsolver brings. Uh, and right on topic to what everybody is discussing here at the Gartner Show. Very much hot topic. So thanks for connecting those dots. So I'm kind of also curious, uh, how does it enable Click to enhance low latency data ingestion and optimization, particularly with Apache Iceberg? Okay, that sounded like you read right from a press release uh, that was going <laughs> with all the buzzwords that you needed to do. All right, right. Let's, yeah, let's uh, let's break that down into maybe real talk, right? Yeah. And yeah. so low latency, that means real time, yeah. right? Okay, so if I'm looking at uh, doing in-app purchases on a game on my phone, yep. and I was like, I need to go buy more credits. Well, that credit, you have to send an event uh, over to uh, the place that's going to sell you that new credit. Well, Upsolver has customers mm -hmm. who are using the, the product for doing those in-app purchases. Yep. It's five million events a second. A second. A second, right? Wow. So that's what we mean by low latency, real time. Yep. So when you're feeding all of that in, who needs it? Okay, the people who need it are the, the data scientists who are saying, well, what's the right, how much do we charge for that in-app purchase? If I need that one little token for a game, do I charge five cents, a dollar, a dollar fifty? How do you do that surge pricing? Uh, and that's part of that low latency, low latency. Reach, uh, in real time side of it. That and, and we're adding that in to the change data capture real time that we have from mainframes, SAP, Oracle, to the ETL batches, all these different ways of feeding data into that lake house, this is just one more. That's awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm also wanting to learn a little about you know data products. That's also been the talk of the town, a lot of enterprise leaders. Yeah, a lot leaders. of people talking about it. Yeah, how's Click kind of working on that? Okay, so data products. So that is a, it's like a new job that's out there as a data product manager. Yeah. And you know, the best metaphor that I've heard somebody to explain is, think about going to your supermarket. And as you go through your supermarket and you're going down the aisles, you're looking for what you need, uh, the ingredients to yep. make your meal. Well, data product, 
is like they're on your shelves and of the data that's there that I need to assemble to get my outcome or AI. Yeah. So we're approaching our data products uh, from a couple of perspectives. One is uh, we need to make sure those products have the right ingredients. Yeah. Right? So when you look on the back of the can and the box, well what is in there and where did it come from and should I eat it? So that's lineage, that's getting it into the store, where did it come from, how is it going on there? So we think about the pipeline, the ingredients, the trust, Love on it. the confidence on that data product. And then there's a shopping consumer yes, experience, right? Exactly. What do you put at eye level, what do you put up high, and we, and, you know, and then how do you make sure the data stays in India, or the data stays in Japan, the data that stays in, in you know, Germany, true. you have to make sure the stores are set up the right way. So I that's what it. our view of data yes, products are. I love it. And one more quick question, because you've hosted two sessions. Uh, obviously my audience yeah. would love to know about those sessions, but also what are you hearing from the enterprise leaders after the session? Yeah, so uh, we did host, so we hosted a round table yes. uh, with, uh, it was supposed to be 14 customers, it was oversubscribed, we had 25. Oh, we had wow. people sitting on the edges, outside on the room. And uh, then the second thing that we did was a broader kind of general session. In both of those, we brought one of our AI advisors, Dr. Mm. Raman Chowdhury. Nice. Uh, so she's a member of our AI council. Uh, she is a thought leader. She's been an advisor to the Biden administration about responsible AI. She runs nonprofits. She's working with uh, the government of India around how do you use AI and build specific language models I love it. for yeah. you know the dialects within India to make sure they're relevant and focused. So we had her talking about responsible AI, pragmatic, real kind of deployments, and the customers were asking about trust, how do I build out the confidence, what do I do about bringing structured, unstructured data, how right. do I make it real in prime time, and Dr. Chowdhury was great in sharing her outside in perspective, because right. sometimes we're in technology, right, we talk all, you know, speeds and feeds, and, <laughs> you, and have to. Uh, you know, and we get all excited about that, yeah. and Dr. Chowdhury brought more to the table and, and really broadened our perspective. I love it, uh, and definitely that's what I've been hearing from those who have attended as well. So okay. that's awesome. Okay, great. Yes, I did. I did. Obviously, I keep a close tab on such sessions, and it was amazing for sure. Uh, one more quick question about the innovation. So how do you balance innovation in data infrastructure with compliance and regulatory? Because every country has different rules and regulations. You mentioned a little about, you know, obviously their data products kind of right. managing it, but how do you balance that innovation? Yeah, so one of the things that we look at is, we think about it uh, from our customer perspective, where are the markets, and we actually use the topic of sovereign AI yeah. as that, to uh, that perspective of, all right, not only does where data sit, there's compute, and then the data centers. Now we're in uh, data centers all around the world. Yep. Uh, I think you interviewed Mike when he was I launching know. Uh, you know, in our data center in India. India. Uh, and we're in Singapore, Japan, Frankfurt, Ireland, the United States. We're adding in Love Israel, it. the Middle East, yep. Brazil. And this is about the infrastructure, the data, and uh, we build that out. Now there's certifications so in Australia, there's IRAP, there's uh, certification. In Germany, it's TSACs in the automotive. So we will look at our customers and we'll hear what do they need for compliance, regulatory views, yep. but then we think about innovation and our, what's the right way that we balance and deliver new solutions yeah. that meets this uh, need. And Very important, yeah, yeah for sure. And in the, in the space uh, which is ever evolving, I think this is must need uh, thing to have in how, you know, companies like Click should be thinking about customers, users, you all have huge community all across the globe. That's so right. So it is very important. Well, and we have to listen to our customers and help Third them, time. you know, and, you know, and today, unfortunately, the geopolitical, you know, situation is really, you know, crazy right now. Yeah. And our customers need to respond and operate, you know, in that, and we have to build and deliver the tools to help them do it. I love it. Uh, one more quick question for you. Okay. Fun question. Uh, what do you li like about Gartner and uh, one key takeaway as well? Okay, what do I like about Gartner? That's the easy one. It's like there's, uh, it's the same 
answer, but on the other side of the coin from the customer. Yes. I love coming here because there's so many different customers from all over. Uh, primarily, this one's in North America. I go to Gartner Australia London, and London and we engage there. And we get to hear our customers, what are they doing, where are they going, what are those trends? Yeah. And uh, the key takeaway for me on this conference is around just getting the confidence in the data that's feeding the agentic uh, environments. Everybody talks about yes. agentic AI, but it's like, how do I know it's going to work? work. You know, so and that's you know, where I spend my time, yeah. uh, it's resonating, it's uh, really excited about it. Amazing. One last question, I promise. Oh, I thought that was the last question. <laughs> oh, that promise. was the fun question, okay. <laughs> yeah, so if folks want to reach out to you, learn more about what you're doing, if they want to follow, uh, you know, obviously the white papers, research papers that you all keep publishing, I know Click comes up with amazing content for the community. Where can they do that? Oh man, so this one's a shout out to Sally Jacobs. I am a, I am a LinkedIn person, so if you yeah. want to find out like where uh, what I'm thinking, what I'm going on. I, I post on LinkedIn, uh, you know, both personal as well as professional. Very and good. you know, I, I'm not on the other platforms. I focus right there. So that's where you go to find out what I'm up to. I'm ama I'm so happy Sally did that because now we can follow you on LinkedIn and you know keep learning yeah. from all the great things that you're doing. Drew. First of all, thanks for visiting The Robert Show. We'll keep the conversation going, and you're amazing. Oh, uh, so good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.